Hello all. Today, we'll discuss aerosol therapy in mechanically ventilated patients, focusing on the delivery and efficacy of different types of aerosols. Let's dive in. Aerosol therapy is commonly used for delivering bronchodilators, steroids, mucolytics, polymyxins, and aminoglycosides. However, there are significant knowledge gaps among practitioners regarding nebulization techniques and implementation strategies, especially in VAP patients. Delivering these medications to the tracheobronchial tree is relatively easy due to its proximity to the ventilator circuits. The on-off effect ensures quick results, and there's no need to modify ventilator settings. In fact, aerosol bronchodilator therapy during high-flow nasal cannula oxygen is possible with a nebulizer placed at the inlet of the heated humidifier. However, pulmonary drug delivery is limited to less than 5% of the nominal dose placed in the nebulizer. When it comes to treating ventilator-associated tracheobronchitis, VAT, or cystic fibrosis bronchiectasis with inhaled antibiotics, the process is a bit different. Aerosolized polymyxins and aminoglycosides are concentration-dependent antibiotics, meaning the bactericidal effect is proportional to the delivered dose. To increase aerosol delivery, we can maximize the bolus effect. Most cases of VAP develop after bronchial colonization by continuous micro-aspiration of contaminated oropharyngeal or gastric content around the tracheal cuff. Antibiotic nebulization can interfere with the tracheobronchial bacterial microbiome, potentially influencing antibiotic resistance and relapse rates. Delivering aerosolized antibiotics for VAP can be difficult because particles need to travel through a complex network of branching air ducts that continuously decrease in size towards the alveolar space. Inspiratory turbulences can cause bronchial deposition, reducing antibiotic delivery to the infected lung parenchyma. The lung bactericidal effect of aminoglycosides and polymyxins is concentration-dependent, so limiting bronchial deposition is crucial for therapeutic efficiency. To penetrate the lung parenchyma, the mass median aerodynamic diameter of aerosolized particles should be less than 5 micrometers. During continuous nebulization, aerosol accumulates in the inspiratory limb, creating a bolus effect, which is propelled into the respiratory system during the next inspiration. Optimizing aerosol delivery involves maximizing this bolus effect by using continuous nebulization and positioning the nebulizer close to the ventilator. Limiting inspiratory turbulences can be achieved by delivering a constant inspiratory flow during a prolonged inspiratory time and administering short-term sedation to avoid patient discoordination with the ventilator. Currently, evidence for optimizing ventilator settings as limited and reported benefits on therapeutic efficiency are lacking. Nebulizing ciprofloxacin and aminoglycosides has been shown to significantly delay the time to the first exacerbation and improve the quality of life in non-cystic fibrosis patients. However, complete microbiological eradication is rarely achieved, and resistant phenotypes can emerge. In critically ill patients, polymyxins and aminoglycosides are often aerosolized in a non-standardized way. Optimizing aerosol delivery is crucial, and one technique is to maximize the bolus effect. The bolus effect is the accumulation of aerosolized particles in the inspiratory tubing during expiration, which are then propelled into the respiratory system during the next inspiration. Using continuous nebulization and positioning the nebulizer close to the ventilator can help maximize this effect. Breath-actuated nebulization eliminates the bolus effect, which may not be ideal for delivering high-dose antibiotics to treat ventilator-associated pneumonia. Inspiratory flow turbulences can be limited by using a constant inspiratory flow, prolonged inspiratory time, and avoiding discoordination with the ventilator. Despite the potential benefits of adjunctive nebulized antibiotics, the European Society of Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Diseases does not recommend their standard use in treating ventilator-associated pneumonia due to a lack of clinical benefits. Recent studies have confirmed this lack of benefit, although a meta-analysis reported reduced nephrotoxicity risk when using inhaled aminoglycosides or polymyxins as a substitutive strategy. The bolus effect was first described in 2020. It is present during continuous nebulization, a to D, and is defined as the accumulation of aerosolized particles in the inspiratory tubing during expiration that are propelled into the respiratory system during the next inspiration. 
Increasing the bolus effect is essential in maximizing aerosol delivery, a to d. Positioning the vibrating mesh nebulizer 15 cm before the Y piece is associated with a significant bolus expiratory waste, a and b. Positioning the VMN close to the ventilator minimizes the expiratory waste, increases the bolus effect and aerosol delivery, C and D. Breath actuated nebulization eliminates the bolus effect, E and F. The time of nebulization is a function of inspiratory time over total time of the respiratory cycle, T, to tot, and is independent of the respiratory frequency. Nebulization time, in seconds per minute, equals 60 times 0.75 times t, to tot. Compared to a non-synchronized mesh nebulizer, the mesh nebuloser, that is PDDS, extends the time of nebulization by 3 to 9 folds. As it precludes the administration of high-dose antibiotics, it should not be used to deliver inhaled antibiotics to treat ventilator-associated pneumonia. Black arrows indicate inspiratory flow coming from the ventilator. Red arrows indicate expiratory flow coming from the respiratory system. Blue arrows indicate bias flow. If you found our video helpful do give us a like and please do not forget to subscribe. In conclusion, aerosol therapy plays an important role in treating mechanically ventilated patients. By optimizing delivery techniques and understanding the unique challenges associated with different respiratory targets, we can improve patient outcomes. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more informative videos.